It's uh, Monday, October 15th at uh, 2.30 p.m., and we're meeting at the uh, Montgomery County Board of Elections. Uh, we have a quorum present, so we will begin our meeting. Uh, and first we'll deal with uh, the approval of, looks like, three sets of minutes. Two sets. Two One. sets of public and the other is executive session. Yeah, two sets. Well, we can do that publicly, right? The executive session? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's let's do the minutes from July 16th. Is there a motion to approve? I move. Is there a second? As amended. Well, as amended. Yeah. Did you want to add something to these minutes? Is that the yeah, one you have? Yeah, that's the one. Well, July. I, I had spoken to excuse me before the meeting, and it was suggested that on the second page. This is July 16th. <coughs> July 16th. Uh, at the very bottom, right before it says the board requested that a line be added saying Mr. Shalek, Ms. Ms. Kusume, and Ms. Phillips voted to uphold the staff's recommendation based upon the official records available to the staff. Right. Is that the proposal you wanted? Right. Please. Say it again. I'm sorry, where okay, is that? Go ahead. Page two. Page two under challenges, Marianne. Under challenges. At the very okay. bottom. Yep. Last sentence. To, to, add a sentence. Just to add a sentence, it said Mr. Shalek. Comma, Ms. Kuzume and Ms. Phillips voted to uphold the staff's OSHVS recommendation based upon the official records available to the staff. Period. So that, that's your motion? Yes. With yes. the amendment? With the amendment. Is yes. there a second? Second. All those in favor? Well, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 No one opposed? So we need uh, to accept all the... So July 16th is all approved. All changes? Yeah, I think yes. I need a second. A second. Yeah. Marianne seconded. Yeah. I seconded. Oh. Marianne seconded. I'm sorry. I thought we were just adopting Nahid's motion. He said, she said okay. as amended. Okay. okay. As amended. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. With the addition, yes. Yeah. Okay, now let's... September 17th, 2018 minutes. Is there um, a motion to approve? A move to be accepted as amended. Second? Is there a second? <laughs> second. Excuse me. All the, any discussion? All uh, those in favor? Mr. Which, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Which I'm one sorry. is this? September, September 17th. 17th. September 17th. Well, Mr. President, I, I guess I, Discussion? I, I'm reluctant to uh, vote against these, but I, I do notice that, um, you know, we seem to be backsliding again towards a, almost a full transcription of what our meetings have been. And we've talked about this many times before uh, and even this year, and many of these paragraphs have been expanded to, you know, four or five times their size with additional text and details. Uh, that apparently Mr. Naiman felt were necessary. So I, I am concerned, uh, you know, now that he's put this in, I, I guess maybe we should accept it. But I am, I'd like to hear what my colleagues have to say, that I, I think we're, we're starting to backslide into much more of a full transcription of, you know, what's done. And, can, can I answer uh, that? I, 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 I second uh, Alex is <clears throat> And I think it's, the longer the minutes long. are, the more of a burden it is on staff to have to, you know, produce something with this level of detail um, and you know minutes are supposed to be minutes they're supposed to be a very broad outline of what, what's discussed it's not the congressional record it's not supposed to be um, akin to a transcript so um, that, that's a concern I have we so we have Out the tape it. we have the audio video I mean this is not necessary yeah, I agree with Nahid's comment about it we've got the audio that anybody can go to and get yeah. any well, it, it's very tedious to go through over two hours of, of uh, audio and I think the members of the public can agree that it would take a very long time to try to find things I, t I take responsibility for proposing the changes in those minutes to a large extent. David had a few changes to make. Most of those were mine. They didn't expand quantumly uh, great amounts of the minutes. I added specificity, I added detail. I listened to the two plus hours of the, of the tape. I had notes, I listened to the whole thing, and sometimes I went back and forth to, to make sure I got it all, but my, my guiding light is is uh, transparency and, and, and then being informative to the public. And since we're trying to be in, uh, in transparent and informative, I want to make sure that, that we all know what, what was discussed in its own paper and the public knows what was discussed. 
But then why do we have the audio video and then we have a tip? Yeah, let me... Uh, there's no, there's no go, video. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, there should be a video. Well, yes, but since I I now know that uh, the, these are really from you, um, it's it's mine. Ignore it. Oh. Um, the, um, you probably are not aware of the history of uh, when we gotten into this debate bef before y you were on the board, Alan, and really the main reason that we thought so to have the audio was to lessen the burden of the level of detail that was becoming uh, so apparent in, in the, uh, the written minutes. And um, it's really not meant, I mean, we, we wanted to go beyond just having action minutes, which was something that was greatly debated here, and a number of my colleagues wanted that, and it was a uh, type of minutes that used to be done before. And I felt strongly that we needed uh, more information than simply the issues where there was going to be follow-up action on it. However, once we were able to get to having the audio, uh, what this really should be is a general outline of each of these areas of discussion and if people want more information then they can go to the audio. Uh, I mean now you're saying it's it, it, it's too uh, cumbersome and painful to go and listen to the audio. Well then then why do we have the audio? We fought hard to get that and if people have that level of interest then they should be interested in, in going to the audio and and listening to the uh, the detail of it, if they if if they're concerned, uh, I don't think duplication to this level, uh, for purposes of minutes, is uh, really warranted. I, and I, I I agree with that. And I, I take the sample ballot conversation, for instance. There's a lot of things in here. They're just bits and pieces conversation that doesn't need to be redone. No, I, I agree with everybody's comments. Uh, that, that think these minutes are much too long. Um, we argued over this, we've debated this for months and months, but we seem to have slid back. But we have an election in 10 days, and I don't want to spend two hours wordsmithing the minutes word by word. We have to serve the public. We've got an election to run. So reluctantly, I, you know, I agree with uh, everybody's comments about the shortness of this, but uh, we've got an election to do, so I don't want to spend time on this. I, so think, I think you'll find that the original minutes were about nine pages long anyway, eight or nine pages long. The amount that I added would probably come out to about a page and a half or so. That there are details that are necessary for people, for us to understand, and, and us to remember what we agreed upon, what we discussed, and then for the public to know what our discussions are, what our agreements are. So uh, I think it's very important to be transparent. Yes, and well, but the sense of the board is to try and keep these as as uh, concise as possible, and I hope we do that in the future. Well, that's a sense of the majority of the board. That's not necessarily a sense of all the board members. They're the ones who vote. Right, the ones who vote. I vote. I don't share that view. I just want to make that decision. Somebody was mentioning about, about a uh, video. Well, we don't have video, but that would be a good idea. I, I would, it'd be a good idea to have a video. You can see what we're doing, and, and it, it may help get people to the, to the point where, where you can find things out on the audio tape. Actually, it was seven page without all the correction. It was a nine page item. Okay. But I don't think it's too onerous to read it over, though. All right, so we have the discussion on September 17th. All those in favor? Aye. All those in favor of the... What's, what's, what's the motion? To so we're, as it well, if you were here on time, you'd know. September 17th, are we approving the minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? I have a point of personal challenge. I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to clarify. Okay, that. yes, I. But well, we will not accept what do you want to the say? future like that. What I want to say is what I've told you in writing, uh, that I am late today because I had a work engagement that required me to be late today, that um, I was uh, sworn in by the clerk in the clerk's office in order to um, not have to be here at 2 o'clock today, uh, and that I am sorry for being five minutes late for the meeting, maybe as much as 10 now, 
um, and that um, I did tell you in advance that um, I was, you know, uh, that, that that was going to happen. Thank you very much. All right, now let's go to the uh, September 17th executive session meeting. Is there a motion to approve? I move. I amended. They were yeah, amended. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 No one opposed. Okay, so we've we've done all the uh, minutes. Uh, on the agenda, Kevin says we have a uh, a. The board needs to meet as the board of canvassers at the end. Uh, we're still receiving absentee ballots okay. from the primary. <laughs> and we also have an executive <laughs> session meeting. <laughs> from the primary. That's, that's we have a budget yes, executive yes, we session. Have, we have a budget executive session. Okay, so yes. those those are the only changes. Okay, public comments. We do have Barbara Sanders who. Hi, Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak about what I believe is the transparency proposal that is listed on this agenda under old business as a proposed motion from the September board meeting. As a regular attendee at the board meetings, I did hear the comments that were made that there was a proposal on transparency. I literally could not find my notes when I went back to look for it. I couldn't find the agenda. Uh, I couldn't find any addendum to the agenda that discussed that motion. So I followed up with Ms. Marino and Mr. Neiman to see if the specifics were lit listed anywhere. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have two hours to try and get through the whole tape, and I couldn't figure out how to get to the end of the tape, because um, I knew that's where it would have been in the time that I had. Um, I would just mention it would be great if the agenda had the time that each one of those sections began as a way to facilitate someone that's looking for something specific, not providing anything more than a timestamp on the agenda. Can that be done on the agenda? Well, as you, you're you, mean, you mean on the minutes or right, on the, the agenda? Minutes, well, no, yeah. on the agenda, because you, you get the tape first, and if the agenda just had, oh, I see what you're when saying. you're starting public comments, you started at, you know, the meeting started at 2.30, 2, 2, 2, the public comments began at 2.45, so you know it's 15 minutes into it. It would be very helpful. Because our minutes aren't available until we approve them a month later, a month or, later. Or, or more. So if you listen, to, then the recording is available just a few I'll, days can after. It, the can it be injected into the tape is what I'm saying. Is that doable? Well, if uh, the, the agenda is on, on the website already. All right, all right. So what sorry. do you That's want to be in the website? That the, the agenda that had been there for the meeting of which the tape is there, that it just had the time when each one of those right. numbers so, began. So, uh, I'm just because I'm trying to get clear, so I know for notes purposes. So, the agenda typically is, is up a week before the board meeting. Right. And so, the agenda doesn't stay up after the minutes are posted. So, how are you? Yeah, clear but the minutes aren't to, posted yet. The minutes are usually put, I'm sorry, the, the audio. The audio is posted the next day. And so you want someone to timestamp I just on as, the agenda as part of the as part of the minutes that you're going through, just to jot down when each one of those starts and and re reappoint. This is not a new agenda. This is an old agenda. I'm just trying to get clarification. Sorry. Okay. It's just it's really hard if you don't know if you haven't been sitting at the meeting to know when anything starts on that. And if you're better adept than what I am at getting through the tape, you might be able to figure it out. But. Anyway, um, I did find out what the proposal was going to be from Mr. Naiman, and I wanted to suggest that a principle of the League of Women Voters nationally states that we believe democratic government depends upon informed and active participation in government and requires that the bodies protect the citizens' right to know by giving adequate notice of proposed actions holding open meetings and making public records accessible. So the members of the public have copies of certain things, but not everything. And I will say it is sometimes difficult to follow your conversations when you have documents that we don't have. 
I'm not necessarily that everything has to be produced in paper. It would be great if there was a screenshot like you do for some of your other things for the documents that you're not that you're not providing out. The budget we usually you know we usually get. I didn't have whatever this second set of minutes was, so I had no idea how things had, had changed. So I'm offering the strong support of the League of Montgomery County that all the board meeting materials and presentations be made prior to the meeting if at all possible. It would help the citizen to follow the business of the board without attending and those of us that do attend to follow the members discussion. Um, we would hope that the advanced public posting would include the staff reports that are presented in open session since the board meeting minutes do not come until after the following meeting and sometimes it's more than a month. Having public comments at the beginning of the meeting does allow remarks on what is to be discussed when you know what is going to be discussed. But a second opportunity closer to the end might facilitate attendance by more of the public and it also might allow comments on the issues that were discussed. Um, having one evening meeting would also offer the county residents an opportunity to see the board at work and for them to understand the way that those of us that are here and work with you on a regular basis understand that you conduct elections with accuracy, integrity, and dignity. And I have one personal comment that your release, I think the same thing was released this time, for the personalized sample ballot refers to it as a sample ballot. The title on the front of it has voter's guide and sample ballot. I would just ask before the next time that you consider keeping the sample ballot at the top. We have, we get, we're not copyrighted in terms of using the term voter's guide and so do other people, but you actually refer to it as a sample ballot and I'd like to see sample ballot at the top of your title page on that. Margaret, I hate to put you on the spot, but in terms of Barbara's suggestions about getting the materials up front earlier, is that doable? Do you have any comment we, on that? Or you just we could put them up on Monday morning. Monday morning at the meeting. Yeah. Because you're putting together everything last minute anyway, right? That's the way it always is. <laughs> well, and it, it, Jim, it, it, if I may, it, 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 Mr. President, it kind of depends on what you mean by materials, you know. Well, what Barbara's saying makes yeah. sense, you know. I mean, if, is that something we can move ahead with? What, what, what We're going to take this up, aren't we, uh, on this as an agenda item? Oh, is that one thing? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Thank Now, any, Barbara was the only one that signed in? Yes. Does anyone who came in later want to make a public comment? Oh, God, just signed in. <coughs> well, that's okay. Anybody? Okay. All right. Next. Okay. Margaret's uh, election director report. Okay. Yeah. Personnel. Uh, status of the uh, status update on the budget analyst, Allison. Um, we have. Uh, Paperwork hurdle we need to clear with the Office of Management and Budget, and we'll try to get that ad posted as soon as we possibly can. Um, okay. That's what All right. Budget. Allison. These uh, board members have the spreadsheet of the fiscal 19 year to date. Of course, we're only about a quarter of the way through the fiscal year, so we have not expended that much of our budget yet, but the um, payments will be coming fast and furious as we get through the bulk of the election season. I can answer any questions that you have. You mentioned, you know, <laughs> mentioned the budget committee meeting. There's a budget committee meeting? Yes. Do you Pardon have me? a budget what? subcommittee yeah. meeting? I don't know if the members want to speak to that. Um, that and we'll have a We'll have a budget executive session. session. Yeah, I was going to say. Executive yes, session. we were really looking at the new mark uh, right. uh, in our budget committee meeting for the Good. next budget, which is still under wraps. Okay. <laughs> but we'll be discussing it at uh, uh, executive session. Mark, will Allison be our budget person in the, for the near future? For or the time being. For the time at being? least for the six weeks. Okay. But Allison, I had a quick question about the, the vacant position was the one for a budget analyst? Uh -huh. and yes. And that you have not yet advertised? Correct. Okay. That's Margie's old position? Correct. 
correct. Okay. Okay. One of them. And you're getting a full time. You're offering that a full time job uh, to someone. Yeah. Okay. Budget. Who was I understand. I, I, yeah. I'm just I'm trying to wrap my mind around that. Yeah. Right. Margie did it as a part time. Yeah. No, no, no. that was put her full time position. She right. was a budget analyst and she was a public information officer. She was both. It was added. The she public was information she was, was added. Both. She was both. Those oh. were her responsibilities. Okay, voter registration. I, I, had, I had a question. When you said six weeks, does that mean that that's how long it takes to hire somebody? Because that sounds really fast where I come from. Uh, I'm hoping that we get the waiver on the hiring freeze this week. And then how long does it take to advertise, collect resumes, the review them? The description is written. Right. So um, we have to post it at least 14 days. Do you all post it as a personnel office post? No. The, the, yeah. These are all county yeah. employees. Yeah. So the it is all done yeah. by county yeah. HR. Okay. I don't mean on yeah. the board, yeah. but yeah. within yeah. the county, maybe. If, if, if we can hire someone in six weeks, that is very Isn't impressive. That up to well, them. I'm yeah. going to tell you yeah. that... Yeah. Allison will be serving as budget analyst with, and I'll be supporting her until we fill this position. So um, we Great. obviously are trying to move it along as quickly as possible because Allison also has other duties besides Absolutely. this. <laughs> thank you, Allison. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Voter registration um, closes tomorrow at 9 p.m. And yeah. Jessica. So registration closes tomorrow at 9 p.m. We were open Saturday. Um, we're doing Risk Business, National Voter Registration Day, of course, um, kind of fed into that. Um, we're getting lots and lots of absentee requests in as well. So we're keeping very busy with that. Um, I believe there was a um, copy of the dashboard was emailed out, and the recent one is going around, just updated as of this morning. Okay. Um, it just kind of shows you the number of voters who've been registering and absentee sent and received. We have um, 662,113 active voters as of this morning, 77,698 inactive for 739,811. Um, and then we've mailed out or emailed out or issued in person over 28,000 absentee ballots. And we've got um, in person web back a little over 10% of that amount. So. Do you guys have any questions about the dashboard? Yes. Yeah. Um, last month, um, you, were, you were kind enough in response to a, a request to indicate the, the change by party affiliation since the last time. Do you have that information today? You want the change, like the difference, or because we've Additions. added to it the number, the total number by yeah, party. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what happened over the last month. I'm sorry, I can get you that information. Yeah. I didn't realize you wanted to be. Yeah, that'd be different. great. I mean, this okay. is good too. Yeah, but that, that, no, that, we can that, do that. That would be great. On Thank the, you. On the dashboard, how are we doing with judges? We're doing well. We're we'll cover target? that in a few minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, voter registration closes tomorrow at 9 p.m. We'll begin pushing same-day voter registration and uh, voting at the early voting center beginning October 25 through November 1. Um, State Board is reminding us the deadline to request for Mailed U.S. Postal Absentee Ballots is 8 p.m. by mail uh, or 11.59 on October 30th. Absentee request for web delivery of online ballot submitted by email is November 2nd at 11.59 p.m. Margaret, or, stop uh, one second. I'm not too bright. That request, if somebody says, I want a web-delivered ballot, for you all to get it to their to their computer and them to mail it back in, this is the deadline. November 2nd is the deadline for them to get it to us, us. by 11.59 using the web, or if they mail it to us, which doesn't really happen, but it's 5 p.m. And then absentee voting in person, the deadline, of course, is November 6th at 8 p.m. here at the board offices. Um, really, I don't really have add anything add, to add with regards to voter registration. Uh, I spoke with uh, the absentee crew this morning as we were preparing for the meeting. They were, um, they had received nearly 3,000 uh, 
web request for that's a request for an absentee ballot doesn't necessarily mean it was a web delivery and approximately a thousand pieces of mail came to absentee this morning so um, this morning. there is definitely an uptick with regards to um, the interest in the election and it, and it's accelerating um, so we have uh, several organizations that did mailings uh, one of them unfortunately put the uh, address of the state board instead of the county so that has kind of caused a little bit of uh, tearing out of hair uh, but we are m making sure that we pick up everything on a timely basis over at the state board all right. So, so that mail—I'm sorry—the mailing was that people were mailing their ballots back to the state. No, no, the request. They were mailing the request to the state board that then takes an extra step to get it over here. Yeah. Who did that? One of the candidates. What? It was a, I believe it was a candidate. There's also. A it was a candidate. Of, it was a candidate that did it. Oh. There's a few nonprofits that are doing mailings and they're going kind of different places too. So it's a good one. Okay. So um, that's about it. Um, <laughs> board, okay, board attorney. Sure, uh, Judge Greenberg is going to serve as our administrative contact in the event we have any issues that arise during either early voting or on election day. Uh, so that's going to be Judge Greenberg has served in that capacity for a number of years. Um, the only other thing I have is I'd like to thank Mr. Subin. Uh, we talked last month about. Uh, uh, potentially being able to use the HOV lanes for uh, delivery of equipment in the event that we had to deploy uh, equipment down county uh, and he was kind enough to facilitate allowing that to be set up so we'll be able to go ahead and have that done so Mike thank you very much for your thanks call. Mike yeah. always glad to find ways around the law <laughs> <laughs> this was for the HOV did you say yeah yeah I, we, we just we, just so we can get equipment out to does the rock silver spring. spring. So that's all I have. Thanks, Gary. Okay, um, Mr. President, with regards to the general election preparation, Roberto is not here today because he's out picking up voter registration forms from uh, the high schools, the future vote programs. Um, but uh, I believe he did send you some information in advance um, but we've made in a very aggressive effort to go out to the high schools, community centers, libraries, festivals, you name the event and we just about were there unless it was pouring rain. So um, he's done a really wonderful job. This is more than we've ever had, isn't it? It's it, I don't know if it's huge. the most, but it's pretty it's up number. there. If it's not, it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, uh, with regards to the early voting centers, Chris has been fi trying to finalize everything. You have all uh, signed up for your respective uh, early voting locations. Um, early voting locations on Thursday, October 25. If you could be there around 9 a.m., you, and you just need to be there so that it's open and make sure that there's no problems. If there are problems, to contact the call center. Uh, the call center phone number is 240 777. I don't, Janet. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure you want to call the record. Okay, good point, good point. All right. Call the call center. <laughs> so we can get someone out there you right give away. Give a piece of paper with the number. I, I will. I will make sure that you get that. Um, and then, of course, uh, November 1st before 8 p.m. Um, and then the big thing is all voters in line at 8 p.m. are permitted to vote. Uh, ensure that you have the chief judge or yourself standing there holding the last voter card um, and to, you know, and, and do the interface with the those individuals that come after 8 o'clock, most of them know they're late. <coughs> and um, as long as you tell them they have the option of, you know, going to the Board of Elections on, will be open on Friday, Saturday, and of course, Election Day. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we're still waiting for the Maryland State Highway Association 
Yeah, I was going to ask you that. I, I made some calls. Did, did they ever get back to you? <coughs> Chris? No, we have not heard anything. Okay. Like yeah, I've called. It. Mm. Yeah, we're trying to get digital signs on the medians on Veers Mill Road. And uh, what was the other? Sandy Spring. 108 towards Sandy Spring. Sandy Spring and Veers Mill. Mill. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know those digital signs mm -hmm. on, the, on the median? So we're, we're trying we'll, to... We'll just to say it. vote today or vote... Early voting. Vote. All right. Yeah. Early voting October 25th to November 1. Because we had, you know, Alan, Alan pointed out, and I was out there myself, you know, Sandy Spring was not... Uh -huh. The signage was not good. Okay. Chris, do you want to address the private sites for providing that or providing free digital signs? Um, we've been trying to work with different organizations in Holland. Chris, we can you stand up and get a little closer so we can hear you on the mic? We've been trying to work with different organizations in the Alani area. We have um, a gas station right almost on the corner of Georgia M108 that has a, a digital sign that they, I guess the residents in uh, Alani use or watch quite frequently because there's birthday messages and all kinds of things for the public. So he's agreed to put a message out oh, nice that uh, that we will Good. be voting at Sandy Springs Volunteer. Hmm. Um, on the corner, right on the corner of 355 and 108 in Alany, there is a sign for um, the Rotary. And they are going to allow us to put a banner above theirs. And so we are ordering a banner that's much like what our early voting banners look like that will be strung on posts right at that corner that hmm. talks about early voting at Sandy Spring. As well as the fire department has two message boards, one out at Sandy Spring Station and then the second one is a digital out on Georgia, which is their second station. That rotates and the message is on there as well. And we're still hoping, we really would like to be positive and feeling like we're going to have the signs out on the highway, on the road itself. Um, we have the digital, digital signs ordered. We will lease those. Now we need the approval to place them. You know, when you turn from uh, 108 to the fire station, that street mm -hmm. doesn't have a name to it. You know, you can go right by it. Um, what we've been do right. working with, uh, Department of Transportation, there is one sign there that when you're coming from the opposite direction, that sits right on the corner underneath the traffic light that says the ballroom, it's right. actually a road sign and under it says the ballroom and it's kind of falling over I think because of all the wet weather it's not anchored and we're working with DOT to get that sign back in place so it'll be visible at least coming the opposite direction. I've um, been talking you know, to uh, Chamber of Commerce with their suggestions on where or who we could talk to for signage we haven't really been able to get approval right out on that corner to get signs other than putting something up on the telephone poles. Is, is that a particular chamber of commerce or? Uh, oh. For Olney. The Olney chamber. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris, I got Can't a, help you there. <laughs> I got a verbal, not written, and I've asked to have it written, request for some change in Asbury that people felt like they were running the gauntlet to get past electioneers getting in to vote. That's all I can tell you. Mm. So I don't know if this, is this the first time you've heard about that? That is the first time. We do have a couple people that are allowed uh, to stand inside the door at Asbury. Would you like Kevin to address this? Yeah, actually, I, I, I get to address it every election cycle because <laughs> the problem with the way Asbury's configured, there's really no, you can go ahead and go through all the internal halls and not have to go by any electioneering. So there is an area inside Asbury where people are permitted to set up tables 
but it is a good distance from where they, per they actually vote. So you basically walk through the front door, there are tables there, and then you probably have to go from here to Margie's office before you actually get to where the voting occurs. But it's just the way Asbury is set up that if you don't allow them inside to some extent, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't okay. see any voters. I'll, I'll tell her that. She was very upset, said yeah. she felt like she didn't want to go and vote because of the way it was set up there. And I've never been there, so I have no idea. Um, there are a lot more campaigners this past primary. There'll be a lot fewer in the general. Yeah, probably won't be as well. Well, it's, it's the same competing thing we see, you know, everywhere, which is some people don't want to be hassled or inconvenienced by anyone handing them flyers. Right. And then, on the other hand, we're required to go ahead and give electioneers some reasonable access to be able to hand out literature. So. I'll pass that on. Yeah. Margaret? Right, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Great. Thank, thank you, you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Margaret, I had a quick question about... Um, Potomac Community Center. Have you heard anything uh, in terms of an update as to how that uh, land resurfacing resurfacing yeah. is going and right. where they are? Uh, they have assured me that on October 22nd the paving will be done. Oh, so we will have a full parking complex. Full, I, and part of it is done. Uh, I went over there Thursday. Um, and the back parking lot is done. They have both circles done. Uh, they were working, when you drive in, drive straight in, they were working on that element of the parking, um, the parking surface. And I don't know if they're going to, uh, I don't know if they will, the parking next to the tennis courts. I think it's tennis courts. Um, I don't know if they're going to pave those or not. It's always been gravel, but I drove by. And I, I drive by every day, and I actually was the one who said to Margaret, "Do you realize they have the Potomac Community Center parking lot all torn up?" Uh, but they're, they'll have it done because it's, if they're close to finishing. This results in more or less parking places than in the primary. Oh no, there's not going to be more. It's not going to be more. They're just resurfacing the entire parking lot, okay. but. A week ago, they had literally dug it down, you know, probably six inches down underneath the surface. So they're they're redoing the entire blacktop. Hmm. What was the issue during the primary where we lost uh, parking uh, spaces there? there weren't, weren't, wasn't there some I construction we were, or we something? We were supposed to lose parking spaces as oh, a result yeah. of the project that do you think the WSSC was doing with the county. Oh, yeah. That project, however, fell either through or and or got delayed. Right. Oh, so, delayed. so it's it's so didn't, it didn't, it didn't move forward. I don't think it's going to go forward until next year. It wasn't wasn't the issue they were going to use that gravel area as a staging area for construction right. equipment? Correct. Okay. okay. Too bad they don't pave the gravel area. Okay. Um, public safety. Um, public safety. Um, the police, fire, e. Uh, 911 and emergency management have received a list of all of the early voting centers in polling place lists, lists polling place lists, as well as um, standby emergency polling places. Um, that was all handed off last Thursday to the to public safety members, um, and we received the uh, assignment of the police officers that will be used. Uh, staged here for election day. Election equipment update. Um, public, uh, the vote, the dashboard that you received and you received last week as well as today shows that all of the equipment has been 100% completed. Uh, Janet, do you want to address the equipment preparation? We've done eight fit the 850 testing also. We've done all the scanners and all the BMDs and the 850. We haven't done the poll board yet. We won't do that because we won't get the file from the state until the 21st. Mm -hmm. So we'll be working massive overtime to get it done after that. So Thanks. the poll books will be prepared after the close of registration. We are given until Saturday at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. And after that, 
Um, anybody who comes in after that or is not inputted will have to vote provisional or do same day voter registration. Um, so the public demonstration is scheduled for October 18 at 10 a.m. I am aware that Mr. Banoff and Mr. Shalik then are you? I, I don't know. Am I? I said I could, but I don't know how many you need. Well, it'd be great if you could come. It's 10 o'clock? Yeah, 10 o'clock. Okay. So we'll look at the public demonstration and then we will go through the early voting. Um, get, come down in the back? Yeah, go in the back. That'll be simpler for you. Then um, all the voting equipment's going to be prepared and uh, delivered for election day beginning October 25th. The election equipment for early voting begins on the 23rd. Um, ballot packing is expected to be completed, if not today, tomorrow. Uh, we did have a ballot stub issue, and uh, where's my little dome? So, first of all, we've been going around the county. This is what every voter is going to receive. It helps to have someone much taller than me, but. Each voter will receive three documents that will be scanned by the DS-200. That scanner, besides doing the tabulation, has to take an image of the three pages. So that is one of our concerns. Well, because that'll, that's going to slow things down as people go through the scanner. Um, the other issue that we discovered upon receiving the ballot delivery was that the perforation was not good, in some cases non-existent. Um, because of the massive order, um, the state gave us permission to cut off the ballot stubs. Oh God. So that is actually a blessing. Can you show us what? The ballot stub, I don't have, remember how they're, all, ballot it's how they're stubs. all attached. Yeah. Oh, here, okay. I know. Do you want Will you to go, go get one No, one? go look in the my gray briefcase next to, and there's some ballot <laughs> stubs from okay. two years ago. So what this is going to do is the line that we generally have at the ballot issuing table will now go away. Well, it won't go completely away because they are still handing out a three-page ballot. But we do believe that it's going to solve some problems. Um, the thing is, is that the state is now treating this as a pilot. Um, and that not every precinct will have the ballot stubs removed. But uh, nearly all of the precincts, I think there's only 40 precincts that will still have a ballot stub on it. And they Those, will have a stub because theirs they're, didn't they're, have a problem? None whatsoever. So it's, there's some precincts in Rockville and some precincts in Election District 5. So what happened was when uh, Jessica's team started getting ready for the um, nursing homes, they started tearing these off. And what happened was in a perfect world, you should have a perforation all the way across. What we discovered and the printer agreed was that the perforation would go maybe this far, then it stopped, and then it went across, then it stopped. Other times the perforation was only on half of the page. These are ballots from 2016, so they're not live ballots. Um, so to reprint the magnitude of the was something anywhere from 800,000 to a million ballots uh, Montgomery County probably would wipe out the state of Maryland's reserve but um, that was done actually by Prince George's County because they had a problem with one of their ballot issue uh, ballots in which they did have to get reprinted. Not at the magnitude of the numbers that we had, but pretty close to it. So um, we believe that this is going to be advantageous 
the uh, the ballots will still be in bundles, not necessarily bundles, but every 50 ballots, just as these are in fifth ballots are in bundles of 50. Every 50 ballots, we have a slip sheet of a different color mm -hmm. that so that it will continue to help the election judges as they account for ballots during the day. The ballots, when the election judges are opening up, you know, the night before, they have to account for all of the ballots that we issue. So generally, we issue anywhere from one to six boxes of ballots, depending on the size of the precinct. So if it's a, it's a, if it's completely closed box, then they know that there's 500. Chris, oh, 500. Is it 500 per box? box? Yeah, 500 ballots per box. And then if it's like, you know, sometimes it's like 1,600, so it would be three boxes, and then uh, we'd give them a slip sheet of 100, and it's in a plastic sh uh, sheet. So they'll be able to see that pretty easily, and then um, they will move their 50 ballots or 100 ballots over to the provisional table, and it'll just make things work a little bit smoother at the ballot table. Um, but again, there's absolutely little or nothing we can do about how fast the ballot is going to be scanned by the DS-200. And we did test, um, of course, first of all, I want to tell you that the logic and accuracy test decks that come to us never have belt stubs on them. Um, never have what? Belt stubs on them. So that's a non-issue, but we tested, we took uh, a smattering of ballots from all of the various different ballot styles, and Lisa Jones and Ryan White uh, did testing, and they're scanning just fine. So w we're quite optimistic that even though the, there we were given lemons, we made lemonade out of it. Margaret, do, uh, does each county have their own uh, printing of the ballots? They're not done on a statewide basis? They are done on a statewide basis. Are we the only county that had this problem with the uh, perforation? Uh, the best way I can answer that is that Prince George's County didn't have any problems with perforation this election. Last election, they were handing out exacto blanks at every one of their precincts. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, and we, and in the primary, the ballots were perfect when it came to perforation. Yeah. We had no problems whatsoever. <coughs> and we were very, very happy. And we, I mean, quite honestly, when Jessica came to me and started reporting, the difficulties, I couldn't believe it. And I thought, well, maybe it's just the first hundred. Sometimes the press doesn't work very well. Huh. And so we start, so we went downstairs and did a, we went through downstairs the first truckload, which was about 900,000 ballots. And we went through and I had them pull out of every ballot style, every page, three packages. And we would go through, so that's about 1,500 per ballot style. And we started just doing a random selection. And we saw the magnitude. In fact, I have pictures of it if you want to really break your heart. Um, <coughs> of the magnitude of the problem. So we called the printer the next day. Uh, we went back and forth with the state. And when I said it's either pull, remove the stubs, or reprint them, which everybody was just frightened about. Um, so they decided that removing the stubs was the best thing to do. And so the printing company came and picked them up, and they inspected, they inspected our inspection. And they backed us up with the state saying that, in fact, that the quality of the perforation. Hmm. And, uh, and Prince George's County, because I called Alicia right away and said, "Is that are you guys having this problem?" And she said, "No, but we have a bigger problem. They had misspelled a critical word word on one of their ballots, and so they were having to go with a reprint." Hmm. So, Margaret, how many ballots do you think had the perforation problem? Out of how many have been printed totally? 
it was pretty much the first truckload of, of 800,000 to 900,000 ballots. And it's part of the second. And truckload. part of the second. So, so it was a, it was a substantial amount. Right, uh, so it would go through. I would say yeah. we ordered about uh, two million eight, so I would say it's probably one point seven million ballots that we had perforation issues. So about a third of them. I would say it's more like sixty percent of them. Sixty percent, yeah. and who is print? Who 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 is? Are the same people still printing this that have always been printing our ballots? Yes. That we've had difficulty with in other times. And give time us their name again, please. <laughs> it's SOS Printing. Thank and you. it's That's a state so well. vendor. And uh, like I said, the la in the primary, we had no problems whatsoever. This year. In the primary. That this year. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I hope there'll be an adjustment on the uh, on the bill d dealing with this. I mean, that, that well, took an awful lot of good. staff time, Good's right? And mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, right. that's... Uh, yeah. Is it, yeah. The, yeah, there is. Going to be. Yes. Yeah. Or no, we go after them. Yes, they're going to no. Yeah, understand. We, the, the, they are a state vendor, so and we can go. I mean, we'll go back and we're going to document the amount of overtime that it yeah. cost us, and we will share that with the state. Now, how the state manages that, we will find out. And we'll have some enough. input if need be. Uh, when you say a state vendor, you mean a vendor to the state? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, poll books will be prepared uh, once the voter registration database is processed um, after the 16th. Uh, we will be printing precinct registers starting next Sunday. Is that right? The precinct register start. And that's used for emergency use only. Um, the election judges, uh, we're, uh, this is the dashboard. At this time, we are continuing classes and we'll continue having classes until um, approximately, I think we're now to October 27th. Uh, we're doing very well with early voting judges and on election day, the biggest change or the biggest challenge we have is we're still looking for um, regular voting operations judges. Uh, we're doing okay with chiefs, and we, uh, but we're always looking for experienced individuals. And those um, people all still have to work 15, 12, 15 hours election day. There are chief judges yeah, are expected to uh, come here to attend a chief judge briefing either on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. They have to pick up their supplies on Saturday. And then they have their pre-Monday meeting on, which is generally about 6:30 on Monday. Do the election night setup, or the pre-election night setup, and then uh, they show up at 6 a.m. on Tuesday and go until close. And that's the same for the greeters and all. The greeters are a part-time position. Uh, the voting operation judge closer is a part-time position. They appear at uh, about 6, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Um, we have some opening VOP judges. We have some closing VOP judges. Um, we have more open, we have a greater need for part-time opening judges uh, than we do uh, late night judges. Thank you. Um, as I said, walk-in training continues on uh, and regular classes until October 27th. The Monday night suggested meeting time is 6.30 p.m. If you, uh, once we receive, we finalize your uh, route, we will try to confirm that those meetings are starting at 6.30. Um, and then um, because we are still training and s assigning judges, this election, I am asking for a motion for the board to delegate the director to appoint the election judges. And we, this is a list of election judges right now that we have. If you would like to, you want look a motion at them. now? 
That what have we done great. to fail? I'm Why do we have we, to do we, this? We've usually approved them, I think. I know, but we still have at least 10 to 12, 13 days that we're still appointing judges. And that is not a complete list. So you want the partial? Yeah, well, actually, you all have done it both ways. Because there was a time where the board just delegated it to Margaret to do because you, you're not familiar with who's on the list anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. that was the thought process at one point was that it should be delegated to the election director who had made the appointment. I'd like to move yeah. that we delegate this to the election director to make the appointments as necessary. My move was on the floor. Is there a yeah. second? Second. Move. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, then the other thing about this wonderful three-page ballot is that... Um, Excuse me, is that torn off in the three pages? Yeah, it is. I, I show... I, I see what you're doing, but I, when they tear it off, three it'll pages be, It'll be off. three separate pages, yeah, okay. right. I do it mostly for stage. Everybody's going to have a heart attack. <laughs> but they're in three different... They're, they're not one, two, three in the... No. Nope. Right, they're all bundles. in different... So they all have to be, well now, where the ballot stubs are torn off, that's great because they'll be in stacks, right? So, so they, that those tables will work pretty efficiently. Yeah, and what we're trying... So they've got to put together stacks of three. Right, and Correct. what I'm trying to convince, or what my pitch to the chief judges is that on Monday night, after the judges, your voting operations, ballot table judges account for those, then what they should do is try to pre-fill, as I, uh, Ryan and I, Sorry. we added 50 additional privacy sleeves to just about every precinct. So there should be anywhere from 75 to 125 privacy sleeves so that they'll pre-fill them so that at 7 a.m., they can get started right away and then have someone working in the background, you know, Definitely. filling those up. And we also have the table top, what I call the table topper or placard, so it has, uh, for purposes of moving things along, so it would be page one, page two, page three, so that they can pull those off rather quickly. Um, but going on with this long ballot and um, what we're going to do, is it'll take about four, 400 voters to fill a blue bin, which will then be holding about 1,200 ballots, which is about as much as a blue bin will hold. So um, besides having, we'll have blue bins at our Romer stops, as well as the Romers will have extra bins in their car we are going to, and I did check with Kevin that we could do this, to pick up full blue bins during the day between 1.30 and 4 p.m. So that at 4.30, if we don't have the bins, we're not going to have anybody picking anything up. Um, and we're only going to be using county employees who are going to go out and pick up these blue bins and bring, then bring them directly to this office. They will be sealed like they always are. Um, and what will that means is that the voting operations judge that's bringing back the uh, memory sticks as well as the voted ballots, if they cannot fit four to six of these blue bins in their car, we will be able to pull you know, some of them into that car, you know, into the person that will help them in the afternoon. Additionally, if you were to try to lift 1,200 ballots in the blue bin, it is kind of heavy. It is heavy. There's just no two ways around it. So um, we believe that by having these afternoon pickups, which is, you know, common practice outside of the state of Maryland, um, this will be helpful for our voting operation judges. And you're going to pick them up whether they're fill, filled or not? No, they'll be, have to be filled. They'll have to be filled. Well, if they, if they tell me that they're like 350, in, then I'm going to say, go ahead, switch, switch it out. If it's uh, 200, no, 
no, I'm not going to do that. Um, but we would like to very much use, well, we are going to use these county employees so that we are able to um, get all the blue bins that have voted ballots back to the Board of Elections by whenever we close that night. So you're kind of accelerating it by doing it in stages, I guess. Right. Picking them up throughout the day. Right. And you're planning to do this at all the polling places or, or only certain ones? Well, some polling places probably. You won't like, need to. You know, I'm going to pick on the promenade room because that's really teeny tiny. Well, no, that one probably will skip. Or if some sometimes, uh, yeah, that would probably be an example. But you'll have somebody on the staff on the judges yeah, you know, saying that yeah. they have a filled one and you can come get it, or they'll be t reporting into you about that. Right. Mm -hmm. To answer what I think was the other part of your question, Jackie, yes, we want every blue bin back on election night, whether it was full or it was empty. Right. And so that's why in sending out more bins. We have this concern about whether they're going to have enough capacity in their cars to get them all back. Well, I can understand so that easily. Yeah. Could they bring two cars, somebody else with them, where they all have to go in one car? No, we try to make sure that they're all in one car. We'll track it precinct by precinct in the Pulse on our election day. That's, sure that's that. really it. That's the more important thing. Yeah. Plus, if you had two cars per, uh, the traffic, the pra traffic situation would become terribly egregious outside of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so how have, um, in the past, how have the, the bins been returned? Have they been returned by county employees at the end of the day? No, no. the judges. Yeah. And when the judges bring it back, you have both a Democrat and a, and a Republican or Democrat and Independent? No. No? It's just one one judge who, bring, who, one judge. who, who brings them back. Mm -hmm. It's the closing yeah. judge, right? It's the uh, voting operations voting. judge driver. Right. And so uh, they bring back the uh, memory stick that helps us get election results by 11 o'clock, and they bring the voted ballots. And sometimes, because they have a small car, occasionally then the closer judges will bring back blue bins um, with ballots and then the empties. The digital images come back in one car here with the closer. The ballots themselves go back in a different car with the with the regional upload materials. And there are um, seals and labels on all oh, yeah. these yeah. on all these bins. Oh yeah, yeah. numbered yeah. seals, chain of custody, chain of custody one, one, documents. One, one can imagine yes. a concern about county employees being responsible for all of those ballots with just by themselves. I don't share that concern, but I'm sure that they would, you well, know, or, any, or, or any individual being responsible for that. Well, keep in mind, well, uh, yeah, uh, keep in mind they will not, in all likelihood, not every precinct will have to have a pickup. It's, in, I mean, if somebody calls and says we only have had 300 voters and between, and remember they have two scanners, okay, so that's 150 per per unit. Um, we're not going to send anybody out or tell anybody to go out there. Um, instead, the roamer, if something happens, and the roamer in that instance says, "Well, maybe we should have somebody," then the roamer would give them the empty that they they have as a roamer and swap it out, and then the roamer would bring it back because of election judge. Again. This is unprecedented. I mean, a three-page ballot is highly unusual in most instances, but we have the way this ballot is laid out with these um, long constitutional amendments, and then we have the county's three charter amendments. Um, it's it's going to be burdensome for the election judges. And there, I gather that there are other jurisdictions that also have a, a three-page ballot. Yeah, just Prince George's County. So, and I don't, I didn't ask what she was doing about right. it. Just okay. those of us with the bilingual ballot. Right, because that's yeah. obviously much, much, much longer. And Kevin, I assume there's no legal issues with how we're going. No, I think it's it's fine to do it this way, and I think it's going to make it. The reality is, is I think it's unreasonable for us to expect election judges to. Uh, Lug all of these things back at the at the end of the night. Sure. Sure. Okay, thank you. With that's it in terms of election judge preparation as 
um, well as the equipment. So, Janet, Chris, Jessica, you guys are free to go. <laughs> Thank you go. all. <laughs> so, old business. Okay, so we have the motions that David raised on September board meeting. I have one quick thing I'd like to uh, Margaret before I forget at least. When you know the board the state board is going to be talking about the budget item that we're going to ask them for extra money because of their the right? SOS's fiasco. Please make sure we know about it so we can attend that meeting. Uh, if in fact there's going to be any public I don't about it. No, if there will be a public discussion. Perhaps we need to have one if it doesn't come out. No. Okay. Okay. So, David, do you want to? How do we want to? You want to address these first, David, one at a time? Um, if you'd like, that that that's fine. I, I would just say that um, first of all, I've been happy to um, had conversations of one form or another with most of the members of the board, and it's been very informative. Um, my inclination at the moment would be. Um, not to bring up my last two. Um, one of those being the public comment period being closer to the end of board meetings and the other one being the public, one public meeting per year. Um, and if you'd like, I can explain that first just to get those um, out of the way. And, and this was a result of the conversations I, I, okay. uh, I, I, I had with people. Um, David, I'm sorry. Yeah. I do have copies. I haven't distributed to the public because this is a proposal, so I'm not sure if you. Please, please feel free. And and let me um uh, let me let me start with an apology. Um, my apology is is that I wrote this up before our last meeting, um, and I left this meeting with every intention of just hitting send and sending it to all of you all, including staff, to get it available. And work got busy, and I forgot. And so as a result, that's why. Um, it wasn't available sooner. So anyway, I, 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 I apologize for that. Um, so the last two items, um, the public comment period, um, I do think there is a great benefit to our having our, our hearing from the public like we did today about things that are on our agenda for that day. And if we move the public comment period to the end of the day, we, we, we lose that. Um, also, I think it's definitely been true that uh, Jim has been very flexible about how he has recognized people um, out of order later in the meeting, um, et cetera, which I personally appreciate. I realize that um, there's different schools of thought on that, but um, um, I, I don't consider this to be our, um, our, our most urgent motion as long as we continue to allow people who do come later and want to speak to have that opportunity. Um, it doesn't really require a motion of the board as long as the president of the board continues as he has been um, in the past, no reason to think that he wouldn't. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, and I also, on that rare occasion when we finish our meetings, earlier than 5 o'clock. I don't want to create a situation where we're sitting around waiting for our 5 o'clock comment period, um, you know, in case someone shows up. So that's, um, so that, so that's the, the, the second reason. Um, as far as the public evening meeting, um, as you know, that's been kind of um, a, um, almost a pet subject on our side for, for, for some time. I am very concerned over um, the fact that there's a, that it's hard for people to get here on a Monday afternoon. Um, I do think that some of my other proposals may help to allow the public to have input um, without having to have evening meetings. I know that evening meetings are both inconvenient for the staff and uh, costly if we pay overtime. So, uh, which I, I, my understanding is, is that we have to pay overtime. So, um, and I also don't think that we need a motion in order to do it. Um, so um, my thought on that one is is that I still aspire to do it. I know that Marianne aspired to do it for, you know, before I brought it up. Um, I know that we've tried it and, and, and have had less than a, a big reaction. Um, I do think that there are different times of the election cycle when interest in what we do would be different. Um, and so having one per year may not actually be the best way to do it. It may be that there is some time period 
um, in the spring of even numbered years before the primaries where you know where that would be like the, the where, where interest is high um, in any event I don't uh, unless others want to you know do it as a motion I don't I, I, I don't see a need to do that um, for the other four um, I'm happy to proceed however you want I know that there was some um, there was some sentiment for separating them um, although I think part of the separation was based on the last two, not necessarily based on the first four. But if folks would like to do them individually, collectively, I mean, um, I think that they they actually do have some um, relationship to each other in some cases. But um, I'm, I'm happy to proceed however however you want. I mean, just I defer to the board to, for conversation. But on the first four proposals, uh, I think we basically do that. There may be some situations where we don't, but I have no objection to any of the four. Well, let um, me. Um, I, but although I defer to Margaret and the staff on whether or not number four can be well, done. The number number four is is different than what we do. Um, and let's, so let me let me talk about number four before. Um, but I mean, I defer to the board. I mean, okay. Um, information to all the members. Well. Um, I mean, I, you know. Well, well, it depends on which one are you talking about. No, the, well, I think, we, could, could we address each one sure. Uh, sure. individually? Because I think sure. th they all, I mean, there might be a similarity, yeah, right. yeah okay. but sure. yeah. they're, they're okay. very specific. Let me start okay. with the first one. Okay, well, said, do, 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 you, do you need a motion to be made, Jen? Because I can make it if you want. Or? Motion? No, let's talk about the first one. Yeah, okay, about it. talk about it. All right, that's fine. The, the, the first one was seems. Jim become president, he share with everybody whenever he get, except when it's a confidential or something like that, uh, you cannot send it to all of us. You have to discuss it in executive committee meeting. Um, I will tell so. you that there are, not, and I don't, it was not my intention to come in with a, a, a list of the particulars, but there are situations where um, information has been sent to the board president where the board members were not in or at least not all board members were were informed right away um, and let me add that uh, and I had this discussion I, I don't I don't know to what extent people want their discussions with me to be discussed publicly so I'm not going to name any names unless you, people want to name themselves but it's not my intention to make us part of every routine communication. It is my intention to make us part of anything that is worthy of the board president's attention. Because if it's worthy of the board president's attention, it's worthy of all of our attention, and that gives us the opportunity if we want to consult with the president of the board about anything that, that comes in the door to, uh, to do that. So that was my that was my thinking there, um, and it could be that the way to do that there's a couple different ways to do that. Um, one is simply to take um, everything that comes in and distribute it, you know, to everyone, and then we just have to, you know, if you if you're not interested, you hit delete. Um, the other is to establish essentially a board member's email address that people can send it to one address and it go you know and it goes to all of us I know that that's um, essentially what the council and the Board of Education have um, but um, but my thought is is that um, that if it's if it's worthy of the attention of the president of the board it is um, it, it is worthy of the attention of all board members with the exception as Nahid as you say of those things that um, that um, can't be shared except that even for our executive session information that's often shared with all of us sometimes in advance of meetings sometimes not in advance of executive session meetings uh, this says all letters addressed to board president or or to the general mailbox uh, copied and, and sent to members so this would be written communiques correct right or would you be talking about a, an actual physical letter that was scanned as a PDF, and that's what you mean by a letter? Something well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't limit it to that. Yeah. Um, and um, um, I, I didn't write this list as if it was legislative language to be um, analyzed quite to that level of, uh, of sophistication. Although I could certainly come up with something along those lines. I would. I would view any written communication, including emails. 
or, or, or anything along those lines um, to be in the you know in the same um, in the same category. Um, and um, although I'm, in yeah. terms of board business, because I get, I'm not exaggerating, I must get 80 to 100 emails a day about the board. No, I mean just well a lot a lot of it's political. A lot of it is no. I'm not talking. I'm not so, talking about. Reading but if it's your, a board I'm, thing, I'm not talking about reading your personal email. No. Um, that 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 is not what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely. If it's board I'm saying, business, I'm, I'm saying if it comes to you as the president of the board, it should come to it should come to all of us. And That's, I get it from you know, from uh, Lisa. We are doing that, that one. I don't yeah. know why we That's have no to make um, I, I I would be happy to give you examples you said of, of where of transparency where proposal. That means before that we were not transparent. We didn't no, share not, things that, with that the public. That that's is, the way. That is I not what I'm it. saying. We are, we are transparent since I joined the board, God knows, a century ago, right? <laughs> so, it was um, a century ago. <laughs> um, I, I am not suggesting, um, I think that we have taken great strides in terms of transparency in the time that since I joined the board in 2011. I'm just suggesting that we take additional strides. I am not suggesting that we are not transparent. I am suggesting that we can be more transparent. May I and, ask a question, and, 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 and for a number of these, I'm suggesting that we take steps that other public bodies have taken along the same line. All right. Jim, do you get, or, and Mary Ann, letters that's addressed to you because you were president, or you are president, that say, where's my nearest polling place, or what are the... I don't want to get on my yeah. from you. Yeah, I mean routine missives that are like that. Not trivial and do right. not concern. Right. Uh, you know, that, broad that's policy. the thing that that bothers me. That you would just hand on to Margaret or Chris or whoever the right person was. Do you get that kind of stuff? I'm, I'm sure I have. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, that's if it's, the only a, if thing it's about a board issue, it's a board me. issue. Then I have no problem doing I mean, that. I guess to some extent, David, it, it, I think it will necessarily involve someone making a value judgment about. Hey, this is important. It needs to go to everyone. I, I, I guess what I'm hard to automate that. I, I guess yeah. what I'm suggesting is is that Lisa's if, got if, it, if there if 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 there is a, a, a judgment that there's any question about, it is much easier for it to be sent to us and for us to say we're not interested and you know delete, ignore, etc. Than it is to later determine whether something you know should have been sent that you know that that isn't. I agree. Um, I don't. I get a lot of emails as well, um, and and um, it is uh, and, and and I have you know work separate from here, and I yeah. get a lot in both places, and um, you know managing all those is is always a challenge. Um, but I, I do think that there have been instances where um, it would be useful for the board to know that something is taking place, for all of us to know at the same time, and then we can decide whether it's something that is, um, you know, worthy of our follow-up or or not. Um, and I do think that it can be implemented fairly um, fairly easily. Can we agree for number one that? It Jim sees it substantive and not routine. Well, it first comes, to for, I, I get it after the staff looks at it, right? I, That's the mail true. The elections mailbox, we receive a, you know, am I registered to vote? Can I register to vote? Sometimes. Did you mail my absentee ballot? Yeah. How do I get an absentee ballot for my son? I mean, 99% of everything that goes into the elections mailbox is staff related it's not but some some of it i guess has my name on it i guess some of it does have your name on it that's true some of it has marianne's name on it because okay. they haven't looked at <laughs> it <laughs> they're, 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 they're a little behind, behind the times <laughs> how about the word significant after all um i, I was going to make a, a a different suggestion which is that um well let me ask you this if if Jim or Marianne are named, does it go to Jim or Marianne, or is it still treated as if you know it's either for staff or, or not? I don't staff? get. I, I if, don't if it goes to Jim or if it's addressed to Jim or Marianne and it says, "How do I register to vote?" We don't send that to Jim or Marianne okay. because okay. it's because we can answer it, turn around the answer yeah. right. in five minutes. Right. Sure. Whereas but, yeah. it could take. You know the answer better than right. I do. Yeah. Let, let me let me suggest two things that I think are. Would, would solve the, what, I'm, what I'm concerned about. Number one would be if it goes to elections at MontgomeryCountyMD.gov and it's sent to Jim, it could be sent to all of us. And that, by definition, if it's sent to Jim, it means it's something that's of interest to the board. The second would be to establish an email address 
like the, the school board and the county council have that is a board member's email address so that if somebody wants to communicate with us, they can communicate with all of us at the same time. Did we ever do that? Well, we could do it, yes. What is that? You push one button and everybody gets it, right? No. What would happen is we would we would set up a mailbox that says, Board member, I don't know. Board, board, board members, members at Montgomery, you know, of yeah, Montgomery yeah. County yeah. Board of Elections, and uh, but then you're, somebody, are, are you saying that we'll then get these inquiries? How do I register to vote? Yeah. Where yes. do I register you to will vote? Get those oh, too. Like huh? those. We will get yes. those. Mm. Yes, you will. Well, that well, seems rather and then of course it, it depends. It depends on how you advertise it on your website, because if it's something new. Um, it is not necessarily true that everyone will reach out to us in order to in order to get their answers, especially if it's clear to people that if they have if they have that kind of question as to as to where they go. I mean, um, um, we 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 do have um, we have examples from other government entities where um, you know that. That the board members or the council members are different than the rest of the government in terms of in terms of what they receive. And yes, they're, 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 I'm sure that there will be occasionally be someone who really means for it to go to the staff, and that you know that 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 I predict will be a minor nuisance if the email address is clearly labeled as being for board members, and there's an alternative for people to go to to reach the staff. The second one is that all board member question to staff responses to all board member. All, all the thing. If one time I had a question because my husband got a postcard from the state. He said you're eligible to register. You are not register. He called them. He said you are not register. Like he was a dead person. Then I just corresponded with Margaret. Do I have to send it to all of you? Something like that. But you just generalize everything. All board member. All question all things i don't i disagree with that so um, are, are we talking about more than the first one now because i can respond yeah no to let's that yeah one. let's uh, stay with the first one first well, one i think we're not yeah. one of the, the points she's making is something i share is that there are sometimes uh occasions oh. you, you've had them and i've had them yeah. to correspond with staff yeah. about a personal issue relating to a family member or something else that is yeah. not policy related i agree that it would be inappropriate to have the response copy to everyone else. You know? um, I guess what I would say to that is that um, it's probably not necessary to have a copy to, to, to everybody else. I'm not sure if I'd go as far as to say it's inappropriate in the sense that, um, you know, unless it contains confidential information, et cetera. But yes, we all have occasions for that. What I'm what I'm dealing with on the second one, and, and, and I'm I'm just going there because you all are going there because I know that Jim wants to deal with the first one first. Um, what I'm dealing with on the second one is is that um, I, I know that I've had the experience that when I have sent those kinds of messages, exactly like what you're talking about, Alex, that my messages then the responses get copied to all board members. I just want to have one set of rules that apply to all of us. Um, and and um, I, I thought that the easiest default would be that um, basically we're all we're all an open book. If we um, want to limit it to whether it's you know policy as as you call it, I mean I do have um, and we probably all do to some extent uh, members of the public who sometimes ask questions about things that um, sometimes it relates just to them. Sometimes it actually has implications for you know more more broad implications. Um, and um, and um, I personally don't find it to be burdensome to you know to to know about those things if somebody has a, a, a particular problem. Um, but I also understand that um, it shouldn't be the price of trying to find out basic information that your business becomes everyone's business. I mean, I I, I definitely understand that as well. You made your first proposal uh, to in accord with Jack. You said that all significant letters or all letters of a substantial uh, well, nature. Well, I, I, I was going to suggest that if it's sent to the board president, that it be copied to all board members. Um, so they're going to get all that, right? I. I have real problems with if it's addressed to the board president because it means that um, so we send it off and it's a simple question 
how do I register to vote, can I get an absentee application, um, I send it off to, uh, who's going to answer it? I mean, you're, okay. you're putting, uh, you're slowing down communication between, and generally, this time of year, everything needs to be done right now. So to me, if it's a situation like that, or I want to find out where, where's my absentee ballot, well, they may just automatically send it to the board president, not understanding that sending it to you and expecting you to, first of all, find the time to open up that email, or any one of you to open up the me email, and then when when do I decide, or when do who decides when it's viable for you to answer as opposed to staff to answer? If you want to give a specific example, like uh, all letters, significant letters uh, sent by state senators and members of the House of Delegates or county council members go to the board uh, that go to the board president should be sent to all board members. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. We can do that. That would certainly be a minimum. I but, I, but 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 I guess what I'm suggesting is is that if if staff believes that it reaches the level that it goes to the board president, it should go to all of us. That's really what I what well, I. Well, that's I'm why suggesting. I suggested the, the the word significant, and in the second one, all board members questions to staff on policy issues or words like that. Well, it's not just policy. It's also it, we we have operational issues as well that affect the whole board. That's what the third item gets at. If it if it affects polling places, early voting centers, or absentee voting, um, and and again, it's a difference between where how do I get my absentee ballot, and you know what is the process for what you know what types of ID are required. You know it, it, you know there there are there are more than just policy that it, that that, that um, is of interest to to everybody. Um, but um, well, but it, but the second one, if it covered policy, the third one covers what you're talking about. So I I as reflected to you on the telephone and and Alex's question, you might call staff about have your kids registered or this questions you just assume not all you all have. sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I say using words like significant in the first line and um, like policy and operation or um, non-personal or some. Okay. Some I mean, words I'm, like I'm, that. I'm I'm fine with non-personal. My concern is that policy is t is too narrow and that from elected officials is way too narrow. Um, that you know, because obviously there's lots that comes other than from um, other than from elected officials that are you know that are of interest to to everyone. Um, like candidates, I, for example. Right, candidates is a good example. Um, my, um, my my suggestion for the first one is that again, two things. If anything that comes to elections at MontgomeryCountyMD.gov is worthy of sending to the president, it would be then sent to everybody at the same time. Uh, and then the second thing is is to have an uh, an election members um, way for people to get in touch with all of us if that's what they'd like. Okay, I, 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 I'm. <laughs> Conflicted and concerned uh, about this discussion. Um, first of all, I I think that um, well, as you know, you've heard me say on uh, other issues, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So um, I'm not sure that these issues have have risen to the height of being issues, if you will, uh, you know, what uh, sort of what's behind this that, that really is causing a problem, if, if there's a problem. I'm also concerned about uh, micromanaging uh, on, the, on the part of the, of the board. Um, I think one has to recognize how boards work with staff 
and what are staff responsibilities and, and what are board responsibilities. And do, does the board really want to get down into the nitty gritty of getting all these kinds of <laughs> uh, uh, correspondence that would routinely be handled by staff and for which I don't really know if there's been a problem with staff responses to these kind of things. How do I register? Where do I do this? What do I do? I, I'm not and, suggesting that there has been. Um, I'm, I'm, I, what I, what so I'm, I think to open up something like that and, and you know, create, and I also think, uh, David, I, you know, there are an awful lot of people and, you know, God love everybody, uh, <laughs> but there are people that, um, love to think if they're reaching out directly to board members that then by golly I better get the right response here and I want to see how this person responds versus that one or who's going to get the response to me quickest or whatever. Or say the things I want to For these kind the of things. things. It, it can get very, very right. messy. I believe. Well, um, let me address a couple of things that you said. Um, clearly, I wouldn't be bringing it up if I thought that everything was fine the way it is. Um, but I also did not suggest, I thought I'd, I'd said it more than once today, I'm not suggesting that we need to be involved in all of the routine things that come up, you know, um, every day. Um, and. Generally, um, you know, the only time I feel the need to get involved in that is if someone comes to me and feels like they, that they haven't gotten the response either as well or as quickly or whatever, uh, you know, which is which is the rare occurrence, not the not the not the normal occurrence. Um, it's certainly um, up to board members as to whether they are comfortable with, um, you know, putting themselves out there to receive messages from the public. Um, I would say, at a minimum, I would go back to what I just said. If it's important enough to send to the board president, it's important enough to send to all of us. Um, now, if you are concerned that by establishing an email address for board members that we are going to generate, um, you know, people asking us about the voting policies of the national political parties or the president of the United States or Congress or, or you know, those well, kinds of things. I think we might get everything. Um, and, and, well. and, you know, and, and if, <laughs> if, if, if that's what you're concerned about, I, I think that I understand that. I understand that concern. Um, and um, I don't know to what extent we get those currently, but I do know that we, you know, we get a lot of different things from, from different people. Um, once again, I would say as far as the first item is concerned, what I would suggest is that if it's important enough to go to the president of the board, it should go to all of us. But uh, didn't you in the beginning say, and I've never had this conversation with Jim, but didn't you, as we started this off, say that Jim has already said he always sends them to us? And so No, I was not the one who said that. Somebody said that. Um, and Jim has. I, I, I said that I Jim... Said. I, I said that, that Jim has always made it possible for people to, to give public comment at our meetings, even outside right, of, right, of the but, public comment period. But, did, but you have been, you've been doing this, sending letters. Yeah, if it's a, if it's a board matter, uh, to, my, yeah, to my recollection, I have. And, and, and what I'm saying to you is that that is not always the way that things are handled, and that um, if that's Jim's intent, which I think that it is, yeah. then, it, then, then it should not be hard for us to say as a matter of board policy that if it goes to Jim, it goes to all of us. I mean, I thought we're, we've been doing all of the things you're asking for. As um, Marianne said, we, we, this is yeah. too much micromanaging. We are a board to work on the policy issue. Like now we have election, how to run the election, to be sure everything is fine. These are, it's, I, I don't know what even we are talking about. It. We're talking I mean, about this I because, because I, as a board member, I'm aware of many instances um, <laughs> where um, I have been left out of the loop. I'm aware of others who've been left out of the loop. It is not necessarily the norm. I'm not saying it's the norm. I'm just trying to make it so that we're all equally in the loop. And quite frankly, um, I'm not talking about micromanaging the staff other than in the area of what they share with board members, okay? What I'm saying is, is that if they share it with the board president, they should share it with all of us. That is what I'm saying. 
Um, in fact, I could, uh, you know, that that could be a statement for a number of these areas. You know, if if it's important enough to share, you know, my questions of staff with you know with the president of the board and share with everybody, but the same for everybody else's. Um, and um, I mean, I it is not micromanagement to ask the staff to share information with us. That has nothing to do with what level of our reaching into their decisions we are making. Except again, I'm sitting here thinking, I have called Lisa and asked her for some information. I had called Margie when she sat in between you all and asked Margie, what did you do about thus and so? And you all would be bored to death with those questions. There was no need for you to have them. That's the a problem I have. Now, your number uh, three and four, I think that I have no problem with either one of those. But I, uh, my difficulty is with the minutia of some of the questions that I call and ask and, and think, now who sends that out? Does Lisa say ja to you all, Jackie called Tuesday morning and asked if, uh, you know, the meetings were going to be held on time or, or whatever it might be? That's no, that that is Manisha. I agree. That, I think find I that, that is unnecessary. Not I, that is not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is board member calls and says there's a school moving into an early voting center. Okay, that is of interest to all of us. Um, that is not of interest to only certain board members. <laughs> that is not that 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 is, that is that is of interest to all of us. Uh, a board member calls up and says. We, we're voting at Precinct X on Election Day, and I've discovered that it's about to be torn down um, for, you know, for renovation, or that it's no longer available because oh, well, of, that, you know, because I of X or Y. We've been doing that. I mean, that's part of our job. I think that's. Well, it sounds like we don't disagree that that's part of our job, and I'm just suggesting that we make it a policy of the board that when those things happen, that we're all informed at the same time. Yeah, but the discretion has to go to Margaret and her, her designee as to things that are disseminated. Let's, uh, let's cut to the chase on this a minute since yeah. my favorite issue yeah. of St. Yeah. Catharines has come up here. Yeah. And obviously this has been, you know, stuck in whatever uh, with you for quite a while. Uh, and talking about how you didn't know that a school was moving in there. Mm -hmm. You did, in fact, know. Every, everybody knew. Did everybody know at the very instant that the person, which would be me, working uh, with that particular school and working with the uh, the pastor there, et cetera, et cetera, uh, no, because there were things that needed to be known about that to know, well, are we going to be able to think about keeping this as a place or not? And obviously, it was something that was going to come before the whole board to to be discussed. But and it didn't. I, I yeah, but it, it did. did. It <laughs> didn't. No, it didn't. It came before the whole board because I brought it to the board and I brought it to the board. I, I, I drove by St. Catharines. It, it, it was. It was not. I knew about it. it was told to board members in May, and it was discussed by the board. Uh, in July, and by July, um, you, you know, other board members may have made a decision that nothing needed to be done, and in fact, that nothing needed to be said. Um, but, but, um, and 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 by the way, Marianne, when when I actually asked about that particular decision, I didn't know anything about your involvement with it. It was not directed at you. It was directed at I've the... known about my involvement with St. Catharines from the beginning because I was, I was the person that arranged to I, get I, St. I, I Catharines. Was, I was not aware of your involvement with knowing that a school was moving into St. Catharines at the space that we were using. All right, guys, listen. But excuse bottom, me, excuse me, David. Yeah. Let's not rehash this St. Catharines thing. I'm sick of it, personally. Okay. And let's not you two go in and, and talking about this anymore. Okay. The what Good. you're saying he is, is it all basis. issues. It's one of the bases. Be dis all issues be given to all of us that have to do with major changes in uh, in, in policies, in board, in, in, in the board issues. So, some words like that, nobody's going to uh, deny. And I, as far as I can tell. Except maybe some, I have no idea, I've been hearing about St. Catharines for at least 200 years, um, that I think that it, 
Margaret does a very good job uh, of letting us know when these issues come up, and I think we need to reinforce that we all need to know at the same time about anything that comes up that affects the board and this kind of thing. And if we reinforce that repeatedly with the staff, it seems to me that ought to be enough. And the president, if the president sends us anything that is of any significance. I agree. No, I will I, I will I go back to, to, to what I said. If it goes to the president, it should go to all of us at the same time. And if you want me to boil down my you know, my first um, probably my first three of these on the list, but certainly the first two, uh, that if it goes to the president, it goes to everybody. Um, that that would accomplish what what um, what I'm trying to ac accomplish with those. I'm trying to make it so that we all, like you just said, Jackie, that we all get notified at the same time. Of anything of significance. Of anything of significance, not anything that yeah, goes I mean, to the I president. I mean, I think Jackie captured the whole argument, the whole mm -hmm. situation. Okay. okay. Um, but um, once again, if it, if it, when you say of significance, if it gets, if it gets, reported to the president of the board, that by definition is a matter of significance. Yeah, I get it from the staff. Okay, we are repeating ourselves. Okay. Can you go on? Well, so is there any we, need is there any need for this? Because I think that's what happens I, now. Yeah, Correct I don't, me I don't, if I, I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Is you know. there anything of significance that comes to you that you don't send to the board? That's not not that I'm aware of that's but not but that's not the question. That's not With the your, question. Yeah, Jack, it's not, it's, it's not, it. No, it's not the question because we're now talking about Margaret decides whether or not to send it to Jim, and Jim decides whether or not to send it to us. What I'm suggesting is is that anything that is worthy of the board president comes to everybody, and that there's no need for Jim to have to make a decision that it comes to us. Um, I'm, it doesn't um, come to me if it's not significant. <laughs> I mean, right, he, he is, he he is, is the board again, president. And let's, clarify. I was let's clarify what we're talking about. You send to Jim anything of that is not... Uh, a routine matter of what you will normally do in your business hours. Yes. And so then Jim gets it, and Jim sends it to us. End of story. The end of story. And, is that, yeah. and that is what routine Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of the, I don't get a lot of things, you know, that are addressed okay. to me. But if it comes so, to me from Margaret... So you say that the stuff you get, you send to us. End of story. Done and done. Done. Um, I would like for the staff to send it to us at the same time that they no, send it No, the president you. send it to us. The president... Send it to us. If I get it, that means they we have... We should have a central figure here. Yeah. The president send it to us. Why? Why is that to send it to everybody? Why, why when Jim is the busy person because that he is... Because we appointed him to be our point person. Me. He's the president. We appointed I'm, him to be I'm, the point person. I am well person. aware that Jim is the president. I'm well aware of the powers of the president. Why would we want Jim, who is a busy trial lawyer, with other he things to complain. do? He didn't complain. Did he complain to you that It's not a question busy? of complaint. Okay, then. It's a, it's a Why question, are we it's a question of the time that's involved. So I mean, no Mr. President, I think this is taking too long. long. I personally have enough faith okay. to send All right. it on. It's not about faith in Jim. Okay, thank you, Jim. All right. Um, um, can, can we go to the fourth item? Because that one we haven't talked about at all. Sure. What is the fourth no, item? No, no. All they, board they meetings uh, material. And I agree with this one. That one, no, yeah. They're, yeah. they're going to put it by. Well, well, no, I asked more. This does no, have some no, nuances no, to no, it as no. well. This, this, is, this is the one that, to me, is the reason why the other ones that I said I was going to leave out in, in deference to others' comments it would be left out. The reason for that one is to allow the public to communicate with us about the items that are on our agenda for the for for the following Monday, and the idea is for any materials that go out to be out early enough that not only can board members have an opportunity to see it, but that members of the public can have an opportunity to see it, and if they want to communicate with us, for example, over the weekend before our Monday board meetings. Um, they would have, uh, which is also a time when, at least for some of us, we may, may have greater ability to engage in conversation with people. Margaret, um, is it possible the, 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 you know, to do that? Um, well, wait, is it wait, possible wait, to do no, that? He, wait till he finishes I mean, his sentence. Yeah. That, that, thank you, Alex. Um, my suggestion there is that um, we allow people, especially for people who can't get here at 2.30 on a Monday afternoon, to be able to know what we're going to discuss, and if they would like to communicate with us about it, they get the opportunity to do so um, when it's you know when when it's still possible 
to um, to influence what it is that we're going to do. I agree with that. Margaret, is it possible? Well, the, one of my concerns about this is that historically when we are doing early voting changes, our early voting center selections or polling place uh, selections, uh, what we generally do is um, we sit down with the uh, board president, map out the year-long meetings, and we do a presentation to the board of what has been and what we will be doing o over the next three months. So, for instance, in this previous year, we began in May, not this year, but the year before. We began in May, we, we said, these are the early voting centers, these are locations that are possible, uh, are there any other recommendations you wish to make? And we made that presentation in May. Then in June, we then gave you a comprehensive review of each of the, I think we had 20 locations that we had, the board directed us. And in that same time period, Montgomery County is the only county that spends four m months and has public hearings about polling places and early voting. We, put, we publish a huge per periodical for both polling place changes and early voting. So it's not as though that information isn't available. The polling place change, I mean, that is, that is a huge uh, document, and mostly because it's pictures, and that just eats up a lot of megabytes. But the fact of the matter is, is that we do have this stuff that's available, and it generally it takes place. Like I said, you made your decision, and uh, we started in May of, of 2017. I believe you finalized your decision in October of 2017. And I don't think I, I know that I got the MOU uh, for the very last location on December 23rd. So, I mean, there's a quite a bit of front end work that the staff does provide. It's not like there's instantaneous decisions on many locations. No, nobody's questioning the, the effort. You know, and so to night. be able to, uh, there's, I mean, we present it to the board first so that the board knows what's going to be discussed. Well, I think David's talking about each monthly meeting, right, David? Yeah, that, but that's, that, is, that is precisely what But I'm she's talking, talking about, about I think, the, about. when you when you list presentations in there, that's the that's the presentation, the whole that great big volume, and then how it's right. put on the uh, on the screen for us to discuss. So. Under David's definition, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but you would want that presentation sent out or uh, somehow it's put somewhere it's, in advance. I mean, it's those two presentations. Is that alone. what you mean? Uh, yeah. I think David's talking honest. about, are you talking about the packet, basically, David? I'm talking about the, the packet. packet. I'm also talking about the presentations, although I can understand how the presentations might have a different time frame attached to it than the, than the packet would. Mm -hmm. To me, the, 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 the packet that goes out, um, and again, looking at what, what other public bodies do, that is available to the public before the meetings take place. And in fact, if you go to the county council website, you can click on the agenda item and up pops whatever it is that is related to that item. Um, and um, to me, there would be no reason why we couldn't do something similar for, for our meetings that would allow the, you know, um, um, the public to, to have access to that um, as well. Um, as far as the presentations that are you know that are made at at, at board meetings, um, a lot of times we have presentations that are made at board meetings that um, we we don't get in advance, we don't get afterward um, unless we ask for them. Um, and um, I think that uh, I, I think by law those would be public regardless that the public would have a right to them. Um, and I think a lot of them would be of great interest to the public. Um, you know, um, and making them available electronically would be um, consistent with what others are doing and um, and would allow, I mean, one of the reasons why Montgomery County has so much more uh, process than many others do is because we have um, a population that is very interested in all of these things. They're very interested in how their government operates. They know a lot more about the political process than, than many by you know by virtue of their background. And um, I think that it would be um, 
a good way to allow the public to um, um, to weigh in. It also would mean that you then don't have to be here at 2.30 on Monday if you want to talk to us. You could weigh in by reaching out to us upon reading whatever you read um, on our website. So the question can't, is... Get, can't, can't you decide on a presentation by presentation basis what you want on the website? But for example, for early voting, those presentations are up. Right. They're up yeah. there for right. months. Right. Right. Those are good. Others may not be worthy and polling of being and polling places. Polling places. Polling places. Changes yeah. Up there in the chart. Yeah. What about the packets, Margaret? Can you move those up? Is that possible? So sure. the public can see the packet before. Sure. So you're talking about what is normally out there on, on the, the table, table right? Mm -hmm. Putting that uh, up uh, in advance of the meeting. Yeah. That, that's a good point. So they. I could put that up. You know, as it would be. I'm going to tell you quite honestly, staff is generally working on putting these materials together the morning of on Monday. Uh, if you choose to have it by Wednesday, um, you're, that's going to be unfortunate. So it, there's going to be data you're not going to receive. Dave? Um, I think in order for the in order for the public to have an opportunity to have a meaningful opportunity to to give input, I think it's important for it to be in advance. I have no doubt that um, instead of being done on Monday morning, it would be done on Wednesday morning because it's human nature for all of us that we respond to when the deadlines are. The reason why I had two different deadlines, one for coming to us and one for, for, for coming to the public, um, is that if there was something that came to us that we had a particular reaction to that, that it needed to be fixed in some fashion before it hits the world, um, it, would, it would provide an opportunity, at least for anyone who looks at it on, on, you know, on that first day, to, uh, to be able to, to do that. But the idea is is that uh, if people want to follow up, that we give an opportunity um, for that to happen. It also gives board members an opportunity if you want to do your own fact gathering to do that. Um, you know, because if it shows up on Monday morning and you want to know what a particular polling place looks like and you want to stop by there, um, it's really hard to do on Monday if you find out on Monday morning for Monday afternoon. As long as we I understand that there could be add endems to it. That over by the time they first print it on Wednesday morning to get it to us, sure. that there might by Monday there might well be things that are slightly changed or to some of it right. or add addendums to them. I'm not suggesting that if new information comes out that we not be given that information. I mean, obviously we want whatever information is available in order to make the best decision that we can. Um, I'm just suggesting that our our standard, rather than being um, receiving information on Friday night or, or Monday morning would be to, to get it earlier so that we have more time and so that the public has time. I, I, I don't think that I mean, part, part of the problem might be in the fact that sometimes you have things that are being modified, understandably so, you know, very close to when the meeting occurs. If something goes up, the public could be misled into thinking that this is a final document when nothing well, has been decided be, yet. Well, things yeah. need to be marked that. Yeah. This is not final. This is for discussion or whatever. I think that I think that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah, what added. can go up early can, if we can well, get it up and, early? And, and you know, Microsoft Word has watermarks that say draft that um, we draft. Can, that, that yeah. can be okay. used liberally as well. Margaret, I would just point out that um, you spent from May until October coming up with polling play, uh, early voting. Uh, so there was months of for discussion. Polling places, uh, changes, again, it was at least June through November. Uh, so there was plenty of discussion, uh, plenty of public information that was out there. Um, I, I, you know, I think Wednesday COB is unrealistic. Um, I could probably live with Thursday as COB. <laughs> Um, <coughs> knowing that on Monday there's going to be changes. You think you could do it by Thursday, close of business? We will. Yes. If, if that's the case, then I would suggest that um, we eliminate the, the difference between when we get it and when the public gets it, and that it just go out on Thursday, close of business to us and the public at the same time. 
Well, one of the things that I would suggest with regards to that is that, again, a lot of times I think it's really important for the board to, if it's something new, that the board should see it first so that they have an opportunity to possibly discuss it in advance. And if there's, I mean, this board never makes any really fast decisions. I mean, you just go through, you know, different types of deliberations. So if we put it, put it out for all of the board members by close of business or, of course, you know, close of business here right now can be 9 or 10 p.m. <laughs> Um, but let's say close a business five o'clock six o'clock and then you guys get it and if there's something really startling or I don't know whatever it would be and we post it on the public uh, on our website on your the board on the board information page uh, on Friday morning that would be fine they still the public still has all day Friday Saturday and Sunday to contact you and uh, express whatever concerns they have. So, Margaret, your proposal is is that it would go to us at the uh, five or six o'clock on Thursday, and it would go to the public. It would at, be posted. It would on be the posted website. on the website um, by nine or ten o'clock on Friday. Yes. That 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 answers my concern. I mean, I, I don't. Um, my concern is to have a business day where 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 people have an opportunity to to act mm -hmm. on. It. So, I mean, I, I think after these discussions, I don't know if there's a need to vote on these. No. There's a sense of the no. board what we're going to do. No. no. Is it consensus? You agree? Yeah. No. Okay. No. So we're not going to, I said we're not going to vote. No. This is I, under, so so just, we're, we're, we're all agreeing on how you changed the all board meetings, materials, and presentations, David. Well, meaning it's it's what the, the budget document, the election director, the packet, yeah. the packet, but the packet, which is normally packet. out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the that materials that are not that are there the, the day of the public. meeting. Yeah. So they don't see it just as they're walking in; they get it right. on Friday. Uh, the package yeah. outside. The door. The, that helps. All right. Okay. That's, okay. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Thank you. It's good transparency. Yeah. New business. Is there any new business? Uh, Canvas calendar. Did everybody submit their Canvas calendar? Or what days you're no. available? Yep. Everybody no. but me. Okay, <laughs> that's all I care about. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you have a calendar? Do you need one? Uh, do you have one? Is this it? Oh, I just do it no. no, no, it's a uh, no, fill I in the blank. Okay, we'll get it to you. <laughs> routes, uh, we will hand out your routes to you Thursday night, November 1. Future meetings, uh, we have October 18. We have the public test. Um, my notes have Jim, Alan, and Jackie. On the 18th. Uh, on the 18th. At 10, 10 a.m. It's Thursday this week. Then November 6, you have a board meeting here that we will be advertising at 11:30. Uh, unless something crazy happens, then it <laughs> be whenever else. Oh, and then afterwards, you'll have lunch here. Then November 8th, Absentee 1 Canvas, you'll convene at 10 a.m. You will <coughs> adjourn or recess and then reconvene at 1 p.m. Do you need everybody here for that? No. Or just two? Four. Four. You need four. Four which people. One? For That's what? November I'm sorry, 8th. for which for one? November 8th for, in the for morning. November 8th in the morning. I just need four people. November um, 8th is which you, the that's first the day Thursday. Of the campus, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's five minutes. Right, right. And then you re will reconvene at 1 p.m. and then hopefully we'll just yeah, we'll start with uh, the game plan is absentee one uh, U.S. Postal. How many have we? Oh, how many have we gotten back? We, can you tell us that? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's on, on your dashboard. It's on the. Oh, it's on the. Our it's on the dashboard. Yeah. According to mine, it was there had. Oh, I see. Thanks. It was twenty-six thousand plus another four thousand came in today. And so we're up at thirty thousand. Thursday and one to seven. Right. No, I'm yeah. talking 20, about twenty-eight thousand requested. Right. Right. And Jim, four thousand came in today. Yeah, because yeah, because Jim, Jim's <coughs> question was, was about the ones we received. I yeah, how many we got? So and it's twenty-five hundred plus four thousand. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Then you recess and come that, back at one. Those are ballots or requests? 
ballots. I'm sorry, okay. Margaret, <laughs> 2,000 are ballots or requests <laughs> that, that came in yeah. today? Requests. Oh, I thought they were ballots. He lives around the corner. Oh, oh, oh. It's early for Yeah, it is. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. Seven to nine is a different crew or the same crew? It can be the same crew. It could be the same crew. That's the sign crew. I mean, they, that's the people that have That's just the two of them signing for that whole time. Yeah. So eight. you need okay four yeah. here, and then I'm the rest only, of the day I you just need two. Right now, I mean, I'm yeah. I'm good on the sign every night because I live. I could walk. I live right five minutes away. Sign yeah. 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 You'll be on the sport for life. I mean, I'm right here. It is, it yeah. is a major that, selling that, point. Really yeah. Yeah. So, so you just need signers, right? So I'm, I'm a but, signer. But I can I sign in every night. November, November, <laughs> November nine. <laughs> November <laughs> nine. You should plan on being here all day long till seven. Uh, then on Saturday, you should plan on. Uh, we're starting at nine, I think, on that day, and then going till probably six. That one time I said Saturday, five, five o'clock. Uh, I'm hoping, and then uh, depending on what happens, and I need to talk to Kevin more about working on Monday, which is uh, the uh, honored, day. yeah, the day Veterans Day is going to oh, be honored, I and I need to talk to Kevin about mm -hmm. how we're going to handle that. Then on November 14th, we have the provisional canvas. We'll start with accept in fall and then move on to accept in part. Um, we probably will have you, hopefully I'm on Monday and Tuesday, we, I will have the opportunity to go through all the provisionals that have been landed in the reject pile so that then you guys can look at them. So you don't need people on Monday, or you don't know what to I don't know yet. I have okay. to talk to Kevin about okay. how we're going to handle that. Well, let me ask you this. Is what's, it the, all? what's the board's feeling about working on Monday? Because it's a federal holiday for a lot of people, which people also, may prefer, actually. Is it a, is it a county say, for, holiday? For, for, for me, that means I don't have to take leave, and that's right. a plus. And maybe, and maybe for some people, mm -hmm. it's a benefit to get to work on Monday. Right? Well, I right. indicated I could do it because I'm almost out of leave, so I don't have any more chits to trade in. So that's right. I, you know, right. I, mean, I, I, I was going to say, and I, and I can, I, I'm not quite in the same situation, but I am in the same situation that I'm willing to work that day because it, okay. it doesn't Monday cost me like what? other November days. Monday what? November 12th? 12th. 11th. That's the... Uh, Let me ask you this in terms of per 12. perception, though, with, you know, honoring our veterans. Is that oh, an issue for the board? Hang on one second. We've worked before. On that day? Mm -hmm. A lot, um, of a lot of people. I would, I would, honor, I, I would, yeah, I was going to say I would. I would argue that we are honoring our veterans by doing this particular work. It, oh, that's a. Is it a, not get is it a county it. holiday? Yeah. Huh? Is it a county holiday? Yes. The yes. county offices are closed. Yes. Yes. But we yes. won't be. Uh, so it's an overtime. It? Uh, it's a yeah. holiday yeah. overtime. We <laughs> always work overtime on the Veterans Day. Right, because it's right after the election. I mean, we don't have it. Yeah. But usually not a whole day of it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, we do. Pardon me? Oh, yeah, we do. So we're not adding to the we're cost. We're provisional. I mean, day. the provisional, yeah. keep in mind that most of the people that are working <coughs> are voter services and absentee, and so and that what are we doing at the time? We're processing absentee return envelopes and provisionals. Okay. So, the, I mean, they have to work, and they work until 9 o'clock that night. Right. I mean, that's part of our overtime budget. And we're under the gun because December 2nd, is when the inauguration is for all the county officials. So we have to have everything. Yes, we better hope there's not a recap. Yeah. Don't yeah. say that word. <laughs> Don't say that word. I just want to know okay. the time, Lisa. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then uh, November 16th is the Absentee 2 canvas. You probably will go into Saturday uh, based on the numbers that we've seen. I don't think we'll be lucky again like we were able to wrap it up on Friday. Then November 26 is the certification of the election by the board of canvassers and uh, a board meeting. That'll be at 2:30, right? Yes, that'll be at 2:30. So those are your future meetings, and I'd appreciate if you guys could, you know, uh, make sure that uh, those dates are when, on your when, calendar. What's the 2:30 meeting up? November 26 is the Monday after Thanksgiving. And that's in lieu of Lisa. November 19th, mm -hmm. which Send was the original schedule. Correct. Right. Which we, just, we discussed this before. It's already on my calendar. That's right. really, yeah. Uh, okay, go so Thanksgiving. November 17th. Okay, so that's it for me with regards to future meetings. Do you want to go to recess? Recess and do board canvassers.
Right. Yeah. Or do you, you oh. before we go into executive session? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do that first. Let's do that. Yeah. Uh, so we, we move. Re Mr. President, I move that the oh. board uh, recess from its regular session and enter um, and reconvene as a board of candidates. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we have two uh, absentee ballots that are clearly untimely from the primary. Uh, that need to be rejected by the board of canvassers. Did they come from overseas, or we just got them? Why so late? Yeah, wow. that, that's what I'd like to say. <laughs> they came from the Kremlin. <laughs> <laughs> from where? <laughs> the Kremlin? <laughs> they're, they're always on time. <laughs> 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 Nothing so late. Think one's from Canada. Oh, okay. Canada, and they can put it on. The Cop Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Denmark. Denmark. Yeah. Denmark. No, really? Post office. I yes. didn't send it. <laughs> but Bill you, did. You, you, yeah, you, say, well, you could have delivered it. You know? <laughs> I could have delivered it. Wow. I'd have gotten it here faster. Yeah. Well, I would have gotten here faster. Oh, man. He's just, Some folks they, just can't reach. We're still on, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they they send it. Why is that? December? October 1st. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Those Danish people. We should also elect our officers for the yeah. campus. Well, that'll be next. This one. Yeah. That one. The big one. Yeah, Fifty cents. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fifty cents. Wow. I know. So this is a this is actually from the primary. Yes. yes. Yeah. May twenty fifth. See, both June, right. So it says June twenty fifth is the is the postmark on one of them, and September 9th is the postmark on the on the other one. Yeah, yeah. it is from the Kremlin. No. 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 June twenty fifth. I didn't look. It got here October first. Unbelievable. Just got here. I mean, how did that happen? It got lost somewhere. That's the one. That's the, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Did we move? To reject the, this? No, we oh. will. Yeah, yeah, I move. We, we, we reject it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is there a, need a, need a motion? Is there a motion? I move. To I move to reject those two. Second. Second. All those in favor of the rejection? Aye. 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 No one opposed. Okay. So the following, the last item is uh, the election of officers for the campus. By law, we're required to have a chair and a secretary, and it has been suggested that a vice chair be uh, nominated as well because of how much time you all spend um, doing the canvas, and um, that's how the board is set up. You know, we obviously have a president, vice president, and a secretary. So. I, I, I move that we elect Jim as chair. Um, Nahid is Vice Chair and Mary Ann is Secretary of the Board of Campus. I second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Okay. Okay. Mr. President, uh, yeah. is it time to adjourn the Board of Campusers. Is there a motion to adjourn the Board of Campusers? Yes. Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the Board of Campusers. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now we have to move to go back into regular session or we. Correct. Yeah. But then we, we're going to uh, just move into executive session to discuss the future budget. Is there a motion to go into I'll executive move session? To executive Second. Session. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Back. <laughs> okay. So a move we go back to the public session. The no, we were we're in the public session. A John executive go to the public well, I have one o'clock that I had to What is your motion? Mr. Yeah. President, I move that we adjourn the regular Pardon. meeting of Pardon. October 2018 yeah. of the Montgomery yeah. County Board. Yeah. Is there a second? second? All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay.